show. Uh, we can then kind of theme this one uh, talk as uh, how to be a monk or how to become a monk in Thailand. Yeah. All right. So first, let's talk about how it's normally done within the Thai system and in the Thai community. Uh, there are two uh, times, generally, uh, or two age groups that are generally the ones who are ordaining, either as children and as novices. And that's especially not true so much any longer in Thailand, but it is in remote places, but it's very much true in Cambodia and in Laos, uh, in the sense that the best education that a kid is going to get is going to be at the Y. Okay. Because all the smart and uh, educated people are already there anyway. And that, uh, so uh, this happened to Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa and to what, to Achan Po. That Achan Po took on the robes at the age of six and has worn them since then, but that he only counts ordination time from the age of 20. He's uh, 87 now and has been in the robes for 81 years. Oh my God, that's and, a long time. And, <laughs> and has been fully ordained uh, since the age of 20, which would put it back uh, 67 years, which gives him quite a lot of seniority. And possibly the easy way to think of it is that he's the... Um, Abbot Emeritus at Wat Suen Mo. But with Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa, uh, because of his father dying at about the age of 16, he came out. But then after working for a few years at, uh, uh, at the family business, he reordained, but he reordained at the age of 20 in full ordination. But other than that, both of uh, uh, my closest friend monks have been monks since childhood. Okay. And, and that uh, um, nowadays, or actually, let us say, starting at about 80 years ago, back in about 1950, we're talking about uh, 1940, was when it was military had a had an important point and so the military wanted boys at the age of 18 which meant that generally that they would go out of the military right into the monkhood that became kind of a tradition in thailand and that they would spend two years in both and so uh there's a whole lot of qualities to that including the fact that they would all almost always in the beginning, be in a Wat that was closest to their house, which was the temple that they grew up in anyway. Yeah. But when, it, when, when their time comes, then uh, they, are, they are free from uh, being told where, where to be. And generally the Upajaya, who is the highest ranking monk in the ordination ceremony, the one who is presiding, uh, is the figurehead. But generally, it's the Achan who brings the student to the Upajaya and then conducts the ceremony. And in that regard, this Achan is no longer just a teacher. He's also long, uh, he's also intricately involved in the young man becoming a monk. So he, he takes on that kind of importance. And so um, after a while, most of the young men will disrobe uh, about the age of 22 generally uh, in the old age. Now they don't spend so much time, maybe three months or, or more or whatever. But they still maintain their close relationships and, and uh, uh, communication and ties with that Achan and with that Wat. And so after a few years, then 
one of those guys we're talking about will then become the custodian of the keys. And he's now part of the board of laymen who oversee the watch so that the monks don't have to do any of that kind of administrative stuff. They're not, they're, the monks are free from the money. But then in the old age, that old man is going to come back to the watt in his retirement after he gives his business to his son, he's going to build a cootie in the watt and live in that cootie until he dies. And then the contribution is that cootie now is useful um, to others. In fact, it's quite common in some temples for both the wife and the husband to move into the temple, but the wife generally will build a bigger house and the husband, but they're, you know, they're sufficiently far enough apart. Um, uh, and, and so um, this, this living system that we have just described gets really interrupted when a full-grown Westerner comes in and say, I'm, me too, me too, I want to ordain, I want to ordain. Okay, so here's why, is, is that generally the uh, Westerner has no clue about uh, the, the lifestyle of the community that he's about to join, both on the lay side and on um, the bhikkhu side. So this is why nowadays, after giving too easily uh, into an easy ordination, now they kind of let things soak for a while sort of like you want a sponge that's ready for work because now it's absorbed water and it's loose and pliable and whatnot like that. But when it when you first drag it out of the closet, it's dry, brittle, and doesn't want to absorb water. And so uh, this is the time then for the Westerner, if he's thinking about becoming a monk, is to put himself in a place that can, can do that because there has been a lot of failures and there are several reasons for the failures. Uh, one of the uh, reasons for the failures is the following, and that is, is that Thai women in Thai culture and whatnot um, have their own set of rules in society about how women in Thailand treat monks so as to not compromise the monk in his obligations to uh, the Paddy Mork. And so the Thai women know this and they abide by it. And one of the qualities of that is, is that women, lay women especially, should not be in the, uh, uh, the private quarters of the monks in any watt, anywhere. All right, you can just get that, all right? So especially out in the back of the watt where there's cooties, women should not be out there, yeah. at least not accompanied, and you have to be dressed properly. Uh, and they have to have kind of a reason, even though uh, being on a guided tour would be reason enough. So we can look at it from that perspective of, there, yeah, there's reasons for women to be out there, but not a woman alone should not be going out into that area. So that's that's the uh, the Thai women's own tradition that Western women don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> and so when Western women come to a West uh, uh, an Asian wad and find a Western monk there, they say yippee ki yo ki yay, boy, have I got one on the leash. Mm. Well. <laughs> Guess what? That happens also in with the Thai community, but it's almost always arranged with the mothers. And that it normally happens once a year at the Katen ceremony or afterwards. That's the time after the robes are given that the monks uh, that are uh, intending to this robe will. And so part of the audience is mom and one of mom's cousins who happens to have a daughter who's out looking for something. 
And they know that if they can get a husband who has just come out of the monkhood, especially after doing his time in the military and his time in the what, he's not going to be a drunk. He's not going to be a gambler. He's not going to beat the kids. He's going to be a good, great man. Yeah. Okay. Kind of like in Japan. So they're actually out shopping for um, qualities that they know what they're looking for anyway. Western women just fall into wanting him. And that's how a lot of men in the West have left the one. I know at least five of them personally, that that's how they got out. If there hadn't been a woman come by, they might still be a monk. That's so funny a little, because I just, I can imagine that. Like, it's like, yes. why? Western why? women go shopping in Thai watch for Western monks to marry. It's almost a part of their culture. Because you can see what a prize that would be. Yeah, I guess. I don't I don't doubt it. I know. All right. So given that this kind of stuff is going on, it's better for uh, a Westerner to come to a Wat that's really open. Now, back in the 1980s, when Achan Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa was, was popular, and at that time, there was a large group of people who were on what was called the, uh, the Dharma bomb circuit because of the visas. You get three in India, three months in, in Sri Lanka, three months in Thailand, three months in Malaysia, three months in Cambodia, but nobody went there then. <laughs> uh, and and uh, Burma was the holdout, but Nepal, three months. And so people would go around and around and around, living as best they could off of the land, including spending much of their time in ashrams or in watts. That would have so, and so we had about 35 or so at a time at Watch So and Moat during the 80s of guys that were there just to hang out. They were welcomed, and that gives rise to the understanding that, you know, they're not the only ones that Thai men come and stay and live in the Watch quite often. Not just in Thailand, but the Thai and West uh, and Asian Watch I know of in the state. They have. Westerners who come and kind of live like monks, but they can do things that monks can't do, and so they're the ones who drive them around and do all kinds of things. Yeah, an intern. They, they even have a formal name, and that is they called uh, generally the the right word or the high line uh, the high language would be a look sit, and look has the quality of being a son. Okay, so this is is a son or even if he's an old man, uh, but basically he's the student of the teacher or the, the monk that he's following around. But normally he's just called a kapow. And what a kapow is means it's, it's a pocket. The guy that follows the monk around is the one who carries the load so that when the monk is on his own, all he gets is enough for him. But depending upon how many kapow are there, the people will come out and load things up. Okay? And so by the end of the trip, then the Westerner, if he's out and uh, doing the job of the kapow, loaded down with groceries. That's how they get them. Uh, and so uh, this is part of the training. Uh, that was happening at Wat Suen Mok then, and in fact, they built a monastery off to the side of Wat Suen Mok, about two and a half kilometers away, called Wat Dam Kiem, and that's a place that has, it's got some Thai monks, it has some Thai, sometimes uh, uh, Thai laymen, and three, four, up to ten Western men, and uh, an abbot. Uh, when there's nobody around, he spends all of his time over at Watchstone and Mulk, but when uh, there, there's people there for him to manage, one of the things that he'll do is to take them out for Bendabat and teach them how to be monks. And some of, them, some of the lessons are very, very hard to learn. Yeah. 
And I would say one of the lessons that is very hard to learn is uh, uh, learn how to be scarce. Like minimalistic kind of thing? No, like not here. Let us say oh. this way, is the best way to avoid a work detail is to not be there when the work detail is gathered together. Okay, okay. So in that regard, the best thing, the, the, diff, the skill that's the most difficult to do is to learn to be scarce. And yet that's one of the things that needs to be done. We need to go into seclusion. If someone is in his cootie and in seclusion, he will not be asked or assigned a task or anything like that. Only the monks that are out and about or the laymen who are out and about, they're the ones who get called on to do things. And then they'll grumble about why they have to go do these things. And, the, and, and uh, also part of that question is, well, why doesn't he ever have to go out? The answer is he's learned the art of scarce. <laughs> yeah, that is a, a very... Um hard thing to get used to, I think, coming out of society into seclusion, like real, real seclusion. Mm -hmm. um, and so Don Kim is there and available. They have uh, dormitory rooms in the main building for about, I think, as many as 30, maybe 35. And then they have an additional 14 or 15 cooties spread around the property. So they've got room for 50 or more. And they're only at about 10 or so percent in occupation. Okay. Okay. And so That's as okay. long as you've got visa, you can stay there. Okay. And, and the, that's another thing, because I've never, ever had to do that, get a visa. Like, uh, is that like a temporary citizenship? No, it's a visa. Okay. Because that's what I'm saying. I have no idea. Like, all right. The most basic visa and the visa that you would do first when the time is right yeah. would be to come in on a tourist visa that lasts for a couple of months. And then um, you can, I think, get a month's extension on that. And if you want another stay, you go to another country. But generally, when you go to the other country and then come back in, you don't come back in on a tourist visa. You actually go to the embassy, a Thai embassy or a consulate in the country that you go to, Burma, for instance, down here, or uh, uh, Malaysia. Up in northern Thailand, you would go into either, or generally into Laos, into Vietnam. Or in the east, you could go to Phnom Penh in Cambodia. They've all got Thai counselors who do these visas. And the kind of visa that you would want would be a non-immigrant visa. Not a B, that's a, that's a business visa. Uh, the best is the O visa. The O visa, though, they may require uh, proof of uh, support. And the proof of support they're looking for is either 800,000 baht in a bank account in Thailand, which is about 26 or 27,000 US dollars. And so they want that as a security deposit, basically, with the idea that that's how much one would spend on living expenses living in Thailand without Thai support, because next year you're going to need another visa. All right. And so this is the way that it goes. So every year you have to show them 800,000 baht. Wait, like you have to have that no matter what? Mm, that's an interesting option uh, in order to stay in the country, if that's the kind of visa. Others try to go the in and out and in and out. It's quite inconvenient to have to keep going out of the country to get another visa to come back into the country. But a lot of people do. You'll find out all about that when you get here. I've been out of that world of it for so long that I don't know <laughs> yeah, all of the yeah. details of, of, of visas. Only that right now is not a good time to come. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm waiting till this all blows over. Mm -hmm. um, so 
while you're here, the thing then to do is to kind of go shopping and learn the neighborhood because we've got Wat Dam Kim, we've got uh, uh, the International Dhamma Hermitage where they do retreats, we've got the main uh, temple uh, area of Wat Suan Mok, then we have uh, Deepa Pawan on Koh Samui. There's also uh, retreats here held by a monk from uh, uh, Wat Suan Mok. Um, and that ha that happens in the middle of the month. That's at Wat Kau Tom. So, uh, doing a retreat or two at the retreat center, followed up by doing a little um, sightseeing and tourism, and uh, mixing that with a stay at Don Kim would be a good way to spend that two or three months first time. Okay get the lay of the land, feel out things. Yeah, I de I'm trying to learn also, I, I got some books on how to learn uh, Thai language, Thai language. So that way I can kind of uh, speak my way into everything. <laughs> Generally then the next step, if you if you decided to stay and it would be correct to wait a few months uh, to begin to ask about ordination. Generally, they would like a layman to wait a year before they ordain, and when they ordain, they ordain as a child or a salmonin, a junior monk. The reason for that is because that's when uh, the Westerners learn how to be a monk without having all of the qualifications of being a monk yet, like being in training. And then after a year after that, there will be a full ordination. That full ordination would probably not happen at Wat Soan Mok. It would probably happen at Wat Anana Cha, which is the uh, homeward of uh, Ajahn Sumedho and uh, part of Wat Papang and Achan Cha. But Achan Cha and Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa were buddies. They were just like that, that Achan and Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa supported Achan Cha and what he was doing. And basically, Achan Cha has been now left with this is the way that we work with Westerners who want to ordain as monks. And then we wind up with some really good successes like uh, at Himmel Hampstead and Chithurst in England. Um, uh, in Northern California, they have a lot. I think that's uh, a, a biogary. Uh, and so uh, this is the lineage that Achan uh, Sumedho, Achan Amaro, Achan Pisano, that group are closely related to uh, uh, the the lineage I'm in. In fact, it's kind of the same lineage in that regard. First place I, first time I met Sumedho, Achan Sumedho was at Wat Suan Mok. He was there, and he was there with Achan Cha. So um, it's not a distant relationship, but they actually intermixed. We've also got some videos on YouTube of, uh, or at least one of them I've seen. I have look for it recently, uh, Vika Buddha Dasa speaking in, in broken English uh, to a group of Western monks that were all brought there by Achan Cha, who's standing beside. <laughs> and so that's the kind of relationship that, that they had. Um, and yet a lot of Westerners say, oh no, Achan Cha was student of Achan Mahaboa. Yes, but Achan Mahaboa, we know him too. <laughs> And so uh, Achan Cha would easily claim that he had more than one teacher. So this is basically what we're looking at is a time to stay there as a layman. But staying there as a layman costs very little. Your food and board uh, uh, uh a room and born <laughs> um, is is part of the package, and uh, you 
you're free to give a donation. But um, I, I would probably go so far as to say that it might be a little hard to chase down the donation box at Don Kiam. <laughs> but nobody knows where it is. <laughs> 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 and nobody knows where the key is. Because <laughs> nobody's got any use or need for money. They are learning how to live without it and clocks too. So you can begin to forget about time. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> and uh, I think that this is really a good compromise because those people who insist upon the status of already wearing the robe are doing it for the wrong reasons anyway. That those who are doing it for the right reasons are the ones that are wanting to, let us say, walk slowly and pay attention to what's going on so that they can make new choices along the path. So that's the right way of, of, of doing it, is taking it easy. Come stay as a layman. In a, in a walk. But if you think about it, wow, what a jump that is for so many guys. Like, yeah, what yeah. my job? Come stay at a lot in Thailand, you know? <gasps> nah, I, I'm doing it pretty early, so I don't really have a much, you know, I don't have fan, like a kids and stuff like that. You don't have what? Like a kid or a, a relationship um, and things like that. So it's very like, very so you're open. good to go. Yes, I'm. I'm no. Well, you know, externally, yes. Uh, it's going to be scary at first, but because it's new, so and that's normal. It's a, it's an excitement in a sense. So yeah. All right. Well, when when the time is right and we figure things out, I'll give you all the details you need about how how to get here. You're welcome on this porch to spend party time. And uh, uh, all of that kind of thing. Uh, but this is not the time for it. So yes. another time. And, and uh, that'll also, one, one point about the difference about that 800,000 baht that I was talking about is, is that that's for a particular kind of visa that makes your life really easy. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, so you can, in fact, keep coming back into Thailand on... And it's also, I've heard, possible that you can arrange with certain wants to get an educational visa. So that as long as you're a resident in a want, the res education, which is almost as good as a religious visa, but the religious visas are actually um, controlled very tightly by uh, a government board of, of monks. It's called the Bureau of Religious Affairs. And they're the ones who have stepped in and put this stop to any and every want because you can see how it goes and that every Watt um, Abbott would be very proud to have a Westerner. So any Westerner that walks in the door and says, yeah, I want to become a monk. And, okay, here's your ordination, you know. And now that because the Westerners are not ready for the change of lifestyle. And so yeah. the, it was uh, this series of, of a couple of year uh, stages that the uh, Bureau of Religious Affairs have put into place. Mm. Okay. As well yeah. as most temples now will uh, uh, point uh, young men who want to ordain to Wat Pananachat. Because they're the only ones who are really set up for. Gotcha. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, because you said, eight, um, what was it, 23,000? And I was like, oh, I've never seen that much ever. <laughs> Pardon? Like you said, twenty three thousand, right? Yeah, well, twenty six or so, eight hundred thousand. Yeah. And I was like, I've never seen that much ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh man. Well, um, there are other options, and yeah, they yeah. you will have to explore those mm -hmm. uh, because I they're kind of out of my boundary. But yeah. as far as where to go and how to act and what to do and <laughs> what not to do, <laughs> like 
my be seen and <laughs> um, I can help in in that regard. Generally, every student who winds up in this area of the wood, I uh, recommend they do a retreat with uh, my friend Dama Bitu uh, at uh, Dom Kiel. He's also there with Achan Po, so you'll we'll get to see both of them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm definitely going to research a lot, a lot, a lot um, before I go over there. Uh, because the plan, you know, I wish I could just go there and be like, I'm a citizen now, I'm here. <laughs> you know, like, instead of go through the whole thing. But I'm, I know, I'm, I'm definitely going to search up the whole different options and things like that. Um, I, another thing is a big question is, uh, do you need parental permission to ordain? Pardon? Uh, do you need parental permission to ordain? Generally, that's yes. And you can see generally in the in the Thai tradition, uh, yeah. mom is actually pushing the kid into it. I know, and that's like that's that's funny. It's the opposite here. But that's that's one of the well that the Thais have known that for a long time. In fact, that was one of the um, uh, the hurdles that they knew about even back in the nineteen seventies. Yes, I had to have my mom's written permission. That is one big, uh, that's a big, <laughs> like, uh, far-fetched for me, a little. A little. Uh, I yeah. could go through the details, but it, now well, is not the time because yeah. we're talking about something that's going to happen years from now anyway. Yeah, 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 exactly. So we can go through those kind of things at a later time. Yeah, yeah, because that's... Uh, yeah, that's uh, that will be let's just say extremely difficult. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell you a bit of the story. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> not, not, not the early part of the story, but later when I was uh, intentionally a monk in the United States, in the state of North Carolina, to be there for my mother. Yeah. That she needed my help in keeping the rest home open. Yeah. And so I became administrator in name only while hiring people to run the place. And then as a monk, I could manage it. And that, that lasted years, in fact. Uh, so during that time, my relationship with my mother changed because now I'd already become a monk. Yeah. So we'd gotten beyond that, but now her relationship with me became one of pride because she saw that this, that, uh, how to say it, the respect that the Asian con uh, culture had. Uh, the, uh, in, in a kind of a way, hobnobbing with the, uh, preachers of Charlotte, North Carolina, because there was some of that being the only Western monk around, we got invited to do things like give talks and things like that. And mom would go along as well as how well she was treated by the Asian community knowing that she was my mom. They knew that she was my mom. And so they gave her very, very high stats. <laughs> That's awesome. And so that really changed her ideas and, and attitudes about things from, oh my God, he know Because she's actually been, uh, th throughout my youth, any time that the, uh, she heard the squeak of the door opening of the Baptist church. She was there to push it all the way open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was that kind of Christian. And she drug the whole family to church week after week after week. But I learned a whole lot from my dad, <laughs> who figured out by uh, running the uh, audio equipment to have the sermon taped in the back room so he could sneak out 
and you go to the local bar for an hour. Oh, man, Car- that is carrying scary. his four-year-old son by the hand to go with him. <laughs> so I got a Coca-Cola to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but the, that became my relationship with Christianity was from my dad. Also with my mom, I resented that she, and I knew it. It was easier to see that she cared about the church more than yeah. she did me. Yep. Yeah, it's the same thing, really. It's the same situation. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. <laughs> so we've got the same material to work with. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely right. a, uh, a big kind of, uh, you know, boom, kind of clash. Ah, well, which, which fist is which? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, both? Oh, well, uh, what do you mean? I mean, one is her, which one is you? Because uh, I'm trying to give you a new idea, okay? You don't have to give her a fist for a fist. You can yeah, give her yeah. a, a, a massage instead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I mean, I don't like, you know, I used to because I was very, like, ah, I'm a, I was a punk, you know, type of person. Like, ah, but uh, eventually I got over that and... Um, it's not like that, but if it comes up, it, well, that was it, your it's, image. I can, that, I don't. I gotta go with. <laughs> but it, 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 it feels that way because uh, every time it comes up, it's like a immediately like boom, shut down, shut down, shut mm-hmm. down, shut down. Like there okay. is no. Have you actually had conversations with her? Oh yeah, they don't get very far. Um, okay, you know, here's the know. way for it to get very far. Okay. Ask her a lot of questions. Okay. Well, <laughs> that, that's how you get very far. What do you mean? Like, what type of questions? All right. One of the questions is what would you like from me? What could I do in my lifestyle to please you? Okay. Okay. Well, and then yeah. we can define that into areas that may open things up for her. An yeah. example of that, Mom, do you want me to be happy? Okay. <laughs> as She's happy gonna... as you are or happier? Yeah, yeah but that's going to, again, I've tried that a little. I don't okay. I should try it like that, but in a sense, it always gets to like, you're manipulating me, blah, blah, blah. No, like, a very defensive type of uh, attitude. Okay, so, so uh, she feels threatened. Then is what you're saying? Yes, because it's a it's it's kind of like sending your your kid off to hell, really, in a sense, in, in her head. You know. I know. Yeah, I've been there, done yeah. that. Yes, yeah. yes. You made you know it. All about it. You haven't heard my southern accent yet. <laughs> I can turn it on for you if you want to hear. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. mm-hmm. the the place that we need to look at in in that in that way is if she feels threatened, then you as a Dama dude bring that out because she's your mom after all. Mom, you look like that you're feeling threatened. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, <laughs> the thing is, she always has a sword, like, ready for She always battle. has a what? Like, a, she has a, a, sword, a sword, you know, ready for battle type of thing, like, mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, which is, you know, in fact, I'm going to be very honest, I'm kind of terrified of it, in a sense, like, I really don't want to deal with it. I I know, but that's the, um, let us say, the symbiotic relationship that the two of you have built up over a long period of time. Yeah, yeah. And now it's time to interrupt that. Yes, yeah. Okay, so if you do have ordination on the mind, yes, this is a really easy way then for you and I to open and address this issue about your relationship with your mom. It's got to get fixed. 
Yes. Yeah. And and the way that it's got to get fixed is for her not to feel just comfortable with who you've chosen to be, but downright proud of you. Yeah, yeah. And that might take a few years. Took me 25 years. <laughs> actually, I'm being conservative. It actually took longer than that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's never been a really like a relationship. It's, it's always been like, I've been causing havoc and she had to fix it, you know? So it, it was it was like a, I was being a kind of a burden in a sense. All the, right. It's my, well, it's that's a no. Bad, that's a way. Then we can look at it. Is is start you know like every third sentence is, "Mom, I really don't want to be a burden to you. I want to be a friend." And yeah. I'm, if you let me be an adult, yeah, then yeah. Then, then I won't be a, then I won't be a burden. So long as you see me a child, I'll always be a burden for you to carry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always been like a a thing because I, I kind of lived under the uh, shadow of that relationship. Mm -hmm. so. And that she carries a cross around like it was a sword. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> and I don't blame her because I, I was I was Christian for two years and I left. So. Uh, uh -huh. She kind of, kind of, kind of. I shouldn't have done that, but you know, I did, and she was really happy about it. And uh, kind of losing that, kind of losing that, uh, made her. It could have had an effect, you know. It, of course, it has an effect because she was uh, praying for me for so long to be a Christian. And uh, when I became a Christian, and I and I stopped it, I, I tried it, and it did not work, and I did not want to do it anymore. Uh, yeah, so. So how long were you? Well, I'm 21 right now, so uh, between the age of 18 and 20, uh, it was a roller coaster, an intense emotional experience, but uh, in a beautiful one, I think I learned so much, and it was it was great. It was great in its ways and horrible mm -hmm. in others, but um, I always came back to Buddhism, though, so it was always back to you know. Well, have heart because Ooh. the. What you're talking about now is happening literally a million times a year, if yeah. not 10 million times a year. Many young men are going through this and recognizing that uh, w without being able to tell your mom, but that you figured out that she's been told a pack of lies and that once you see through the lies, it's really, really hard to put the lies back together again. It's almost like a broken vase. Once that vase is broken, yeah, it's not I, likely to get it back together again, and it's certainly not going to be what it was before it was busted. Yeah, I tried, and it did not work. <laughs> so, um, putting, putting it back together again is not the option, but what is the option is to get your mom comfortable yeah. with that for you, it's that's broken, but there are other vases. There are other ways. And so this is where we begin to talk about it with her in the frame of reference of, well, what do you want for me? Because if she says, oh, I want you to be a Baptist preacher down at the, uh, <laughs> I want you to be the president of the Southern Baptist Convention or that kind of thing. You yeah. can you can just sidestep that by saying, "Well, what else would you like for me to be?" Yeah, yeah. She's oh, she's from a different uh, a different tradition, uh, charismatic. Uh, doesn't matter. Yeah. It it yeah, really no, doesn't. It's I, all it's all the same. I was just uh, me, yeah. going for what I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um. <laughs> So, yes, there's a lot of young men who are disappointments to their mom. And the primary disappointment is, is that the kid does not know how to handle his mom over her desires of what she wants for her kid. Yes. Because basically yeah. what you're looking for is to take her in the direction that what she wants from you 
is for you to have a happy, upstanding, high quality life. Check. <laughs> okay. Yes. And say, Mom, that's actually what I'm dedicating for. That that's what I'm working at is to yeah. be high quality, upstanding, high morals. Yeah. Something, Mom, that you would be proud of. Yeah. And you can yeah. start playing with her at that level. I'll try and see how that goes. <laughs> okay. And if she comes back at all, with all the terror, oh, I want you to be a Christian. Yeah. You can begin to ask her what benefits that a Christian has. If I'm disappointed, unhappy, an average ordinary Christian, then how is that being better than someone who is highly moral, upstanding, honest, and friendly to all? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a better deal. Uh huh. And it's, it's, you know something? If you tell her or ask her that set of questions often enough, she'll begin to figure it out for herself. It really is, is not her. And, the, and the, the bottom line for her is when she figured out it's really not her business to live your life for you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I, you know, I don't blame her. I just, it's in a sense like I have changed a lot. And, and you know, parents, all they want to do is see stability, see consistency, see safety, you know. That's what you've got to start showing her is yeah. already the new stability. Yes, it looked like to her turmoil when you, she saw you turning your ship around. But yeah. now if you're heading in the right direction. Now look at the stability. Yeah, and it's even with, uh, with art. Uh, I tried art. I tried, you know, going to school like four times, I think, or three times. And every time I did it, I always came back to the same thing. I just, I just want to, I just want to practice for the rest of my life. Like, I don't, I can't, I just, it felt like wrong. I don't know. It, not in a way like I hate school, I hate art, but it's like something in me is just like, oh man, I just want to, I really, I don't know. Like it's an, un, I don't know how, why, but I've been like that since I was 16. So, um, ever since I discovered, you know, the, so you're beginning, it sounds like that you're beginning to talk about that you're, you, you're liking seclusion. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and Okay. Well, you don't have, though that may be in the long run, the cheapest and easiest option is not your only option. But one of the things that you can in fact do is just hit the trail, hit the road, go hitchhiking. And, you know, spend the night in a in a uh, in a pup tent or in a uh, um, uh, a knapsack, and be on your own for a while. You can do it on the cheap. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you can you, know, you never you can you find never a say. field or meadow to hang out in, put your tent up, and just enjoy the day and watch the sun as it rises and falls. Yeah. You never really think of that because, first of all, the natural tendency to be afraid and uh, the other tendency is like, you know, it's complete dependence upon the, just every moment and you have no security in the future at all, which is the reality anyways. But uh, yes, it is, isn't it? Uh huh. So it's just the that the that. It's in like, fact, it's kind of a false sense of security. But when we get out into the this is, in fact, part of the reason why the monks in Thailand go on Tudong, which when in Australia, they call walkabout. OK, 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 they're just out and they go with they, uh, generally as a um, uh, the tent then would be an umbrella that they carry with them. But once yeah, you put the umbrella yeah. up, then it's got mosquito netting on the inside, and you can make it into a tent. You can hang it from a tree and get rid of the pole. Hmm. So it's got... Um, <laughs> being a Buddhist monk has camping built into it. <laughs> yeah. 
It comes as part of the package, which has to do with being content with little. How little can you be content with? When you have to drag around everything you want and everything you need to sustain life. That's what we're getting at. Okay. Yeah. Is to get your life down to the point that you can carry everything you need with you. For the monk, it's his bowl primarily. It's also that huge Sangati robe that raised across his shoulder. And that umbrella and all the little goodies that you can put into that bowl, including fire making equipment and uh, a water uh, purifier. That what you do is you put various pieces of the robe on, on it to, to filter the water through several layers of the robe. Okay. And so you can then suck through it and pull, pull the stuff through the robe and have purified water. Yeah. So, I mean, they were prepared. Yeah, they were in the complete forest, uh, forest dwellers. <laughs> yeah, forest dwellers. They got to know how to do it out there. So they have all the stuff. Yeah, uh, Ajahn uh, Sona did that before he became a monk. He, uh, he bought, uh, he just bought a little cabin and lived there for a few, like three years, I think. Uh, not knowing he was going to be a Buddhist monk, but. <laughs> hey, if you've been three months in a cabin or three years in the cabin, there's not much left to do after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, pretty much. <laughs> It's it's uh it's it's definitely intense because uh, um it's more of like letting go of the burden of the expectation and it's funny like a lot of people want to do that but when it comes the option arises to do that a lot of uh, like real tension just starts popping up. I know I've seen it so many times. <laughs> on one yeah. occasion, one of my friends who was a monk saying that he really wanted to go to Sri Lanka. And oh. so I said, okay, uh, how much is it? I'll, I'll, I'll give you the money right now for it. <laughs> Freaked him out. <laughs> he wanted to keep it a daydream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it really does like that. It really works like that. And, and that's good that I know it because, in a sense, I don't care. It's there. I'm gonna, once I go, there is no turning back. Like, there is no, like, oh, because once I go, I'll get used to it. Like, like it's just, uh, uh, you know, every, but I think everyone, every monk probably maybe goes through the first two weeks crying or something like, ah, I want to go. But, you know, you have to make it through or something. You got to make it through. You kind of have to realize that you don't have nothing to go back to. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yes, and sometimes that takes a long time to figure that out, that there really is nothing left there. Yeah. Uh, except perhaps in your case, a loving mother who supports you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, yeah. so that's, that's now, um, you can think of it as an obstacle or a chore, but you can also think of it as part of your path. Because yeah. very, very few young men have to uh, get around to figuring out that they do have an obligation to their mom. That we want her to be se feel secure and happy and, um, and, and come around to accepting our way of life. Actually, in order to do that, quite often, though, it does take a prick in the balloon of belief in Christianity. Yeah, and that's her, her and, whole life, and that's everything. That's literally okay. everything. And so every, every time she sees you, she wants to huff and puff and fill that balloon even bigger and tighter. Oh. Yeah. Uh, because she's afraid that... Uh, see, she feels obligated... In the, in the sense that if she can't save her own son, then what kind of station is she going to get in heaven? This, yeah, is, the, this is kind the, of a yeah. selfish part of it, but it's, it's built in there uh, as kind of the hook that, that gets her started, that she feels obligated. So part of the teaching that you have to do with her is to help her understand that 
she is not obligated to take care of you anymore. That you can do that for yourself and she'll really enjoy the outcome of the effort that you're putting in. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and I, and I, I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> she, she's definitely held out, you know. She's, she's not um, a very, she's not like in my face. But when I bring it up, it becomes like, boom, it's like a bomb, you know. And when she, when she explodes like that, you can uh, say things like, Mom, it looks like that you just, you're a bomb that's just exploded. <laughs> oh, man. That takes a lot of courage, no? Well, it's the truth. Yeah. And the truth, they say, will set you free. Suppose, oh, for, but first, you it'll piss it. you off. And right now, it's really going to piss your mom off. That's why we want to feed it to her a little bit of the time in the sense of, Mom, you, you've exploded. Yeah, yeah. Wow, well, calm down a little bit. You'll be okay. Down, girl, down, girl. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if you can start to do that, that, in fact, will change the dynamic of the relationship. By you comforting her, you're switching the dominant role and basically the underdog and the, and the uh, um, top dog. Okay. So when she explodes, use that as an opportunity to reverse roles with her. Yeah. Yeah, and another factor is and that, she, that she thinks that uh, being a monk is just getting rid of all responsibility. You know. The answer to that is yes, it is. No. Isn't that marvelous? Don't even go to the no. Just try to convince her that yes, it really is marvelous that you can, in fact, be free from all of those obligations that really are not um, satisfied. Well, that's a thing. So the responsibility to her is, is extremely important. It's like one of the main things about being a human, really. You know, uh, is what is having a having a, a, a being you know a, a, a good societal you know pay your bills on you know get a job oh sorry okay. uh, like a societal you know good good kid uh, with a tie on type of thing. Come here. Yeah. No, no, come on, let me see you. You got <laughs> look, she's got gloves, she's got masks, she's out ready to go. <laughs> and it's so hot, it's so hot. <laughs> yes, that's true. Your mom, in fact, will be slow to go in that direction because you yourself were slow to start changing and going in that direction. But there is something about human nature that you can use to your advantage. Okay. And that in fact, Freud ran across it, uh, but his nephew, uh, Edward Bernays really put it into practice and it became eventually under various names. One of them is industrial psychology. The art of business to control their workers. The art of business to manipulate the market, et cetera, like that. Okay. Also in World War II and before, it was called propaganda. <laughs> yeah. By Hitler. Okay. What we mean by propaganda you see also Donald Trump using it full force. Mm -hmm. And that is saying the same things over and over and over again. In fact, that's yeah. my job, too, <laughs> is to keep saying this stuff over and over and over again. And I'm yeah. letting you in on that secret. So now you got um, the part of the task of doing dealing with your mom is saying things over and over and over again until she gets used to it. Yeah. Okay. And it, and doing the same tricks with her 
that take her out of being the boss, out of her mother role, caring for her wayward child, into being a whimpering child that doesn't get her way, being nurtured by her strong son. You see that role reversal? And she has to be able to see it too, because she has to come to the point of being able to rely upon you at least to manage your own life. Yeah. And you can do that, but it's not going to happen because you tried it once or twice. It's not three little pigs and a wolf. It's 20,000 pigs and the wolf. (laughs) You got to keep telling her over and over and over again, keep practicing over and over and over again. These, uh, these techniques and the telling her, And basically keep asking her questions. If you if if you get her into questions to the point that she's confused, that means now she's starting to think. Yeah, which is immediately because she knows me. You know, she knows me, she knows really what I want to do, you know. So uh because I brought it up. I I brought it up before and uh it's a that you want to be a Buddhist monk? Is that what yeah. you told? Y- yeah. Okay. Let's not terrify her. Let's yeah. not mention that anymore. At 16, out in the car, I was like, I, I want to be a <laughs> and, and then older, I, I kind of told it a little uh, twice or three times. Or whatever. If that's to be, I'd be honored to guide and help you through it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like such a... It's always been such a far-fetched, because uh, really, you want to know the truth? I was just planning to just go, if, <laughs> like leave a note on the door and just go, you know? Um, well, now that, you, now that you know that Thailand is very family-oriented. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, uh, no, 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 <laughs> go back. Yeah, let, no, no, we've got, we've got a bigger task to deal with. And in fact, if you think about it like that, That's also part of your obligation to the Dhamma itself. If you're going to learn how to become friendly with everything, you're going to have to learn to be friends with mom, too. Yeah, and I've never I've never had that, at least from what I can remember. Well, the friendship is only it can only happen at a level where things are kind of more or less equal. So long as she sees she's mom and your kid in her mind things are going to stay stuck the way that they are but every time you can reverse that will help her come to an equilibrium so that the two of you can in fact meet as caring adults caring for one another yeah 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 that's i think she does care about you she really really cares for you she's just doing it in a deluded way yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, thinking about it, it already puts so much, like, blah, 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 you know, in my head. Like, mm. you know, even thinking about doing it makes me kind of like, oh, nervous because. Uh, okay, well, I'm, now I'm already, you know uh, what, what we're going to uh, do for meditation is when you sit. You can begin to think about this, and when that fluttering comes up, that's when you can say, "Uh Aha, I see you fluttering. Uh Aha, I see you, Mara. And then you can throw it out, take a deep breath, and say, But that's not what I'm going to feel like when I'm in front of my mom. I'm going to be strong and sharp and not to pull a flutter. Yeah. And settle yourself down. And then have a, a mental conversation with her that's in a state where you feel really good, where you know you're going to win. That you can convince her because she wants you to be in that flutter. That's been the relationship. In fact, without that flutter, she's got very few defenses and, and uh, offensive weapons left. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what if that, none of that works? Well, back to the uh, the floor. <laughs> no, or as Gawanka would say, never mind, start again. Let's start dealing with that flutter. Until you can deal with that flutter alone, you won't be able to deal with it in front of her. 
I, I meant like, uh, what if questioning and doing all these things don't work? Uh, <clears throat> like, what if I question and question? Within and what I, time frame? You know, I don't know. Years, three years, you know, two years. Well, I've already mentioned 25, and then I said I was conservative. I know, but I'm... I, I just uh, you're, oh you're in a hurry okay you <laughs> you really want something you can't have yeah which is I'm right. trying I'm, well I'm this trying is to, yeah, here's another way of looking at it learning to deal with your mom in your own mind when you're in private is a skill that needs to be developed okay. so that when you're actually with her now you need that skill partially if not completely developed to actually deal with her and when you get your skills set together you will be able to deal with her you'll know that because you have the confidence to do so right now she freaks you out yeah mostly because you know i probably just have it ah so actually she doesn't freak you out you freak you out <laughs> Ah, oh, oh, now I get it. Okay, well, that sounds more like Dama anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always okay. links to that. So that's what we need to start doing then, is learning not to freak oneself out over wanting things that you don't have or in dealing with mom. Knowing that when you do deal with mom, she will do exactly the kind of things that she's always done that freaks you out. Yeah. And if she if she does the same things that freak you out and you're not freaked out, she'll double duty. She'll double down on it. She'll make sure that she can freak you out. Yeah. It's only when she figures out finally that she can't freak you out this time that she that it'll be easier next time for her to figure out she can't freak you out today. And that happens over and over and over again. This is a training process. No one becomes a virtuoso in front of an orchestra with a violin playing Tchaikovsky's first violin concerto until they learn how to play the violin. And that yeah. takes years of practice. Okay? If you're going to become a virtuoso in living the life that you're promising that you're going to give to your mom, then you got to practice it. Yes. Yeah. You got to practice that fiddle. Yeah, because really I kind of just, uh, uh, I don't, I don't get angry anymore. Um, and I don't, I don't have like, I, I think I don't have resentment, but, uh, in a sense, like, um, um, in a sense, uh, how I say there is that, there is that, uh, I'm trying to word it. Uh, this belief, you know, about her, that uh, this belief that no matter what I do, if, you know, I'll, ultimately I just gave up on the relationship. Eventually, I just really gave it up because I just realized that there's no way. Like at least that's what I, my mind said. Like. Uh -huh. you know, Eventually, you I can understand tired. more that the right way to have said that was I'm giving up now because I recognize I do not have the skill set to deal with her. Yeah, now, now I, I see that. Okay, now that you see that, uh, the question becomes, are you willing to put in the effort? Yes. To get your mind get cleaned out enough so that you can deal with her. If it's going to get me to the monastery, then yes. <laughs> Well, it'll get you to a state of mind that might or might not include a monastery, but it'll sure be a, a whole lot better than the hell that you're creating for yourself now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, okay. that's a huge issue in my life. Yes, so. okay. So now we know we've got a direction to go in, most specifically in the sense of relationship with mom. But the way to get into a good relationship with her is not with her, but thinking about it and learning to control your own emotional systems through the practice of Anapanasati. Like, aha, I see you, anxiety or uh, trauma or 
um, in, a, in a visual way that you used a moment ago of mom coming in like, like this, okay? Yeah. And now we say, ah, oh, I see you, I see you. Yeah. Okay, when you can learn to do that in your mind, then you can do that with her in reality. So when she pulls her tricks with you, you can say, ah, I've seen that one before, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, uh, how do I say, it's, it's such, yeah, it's going to take a lot of uh, under, you know, myself being with that, because uh, really I thought it wasn't a big deal. I thought that, but then I realized that it was a, a, a rule. And uh, I was like, why is this a rule? Like, I would think that the Buddha would just not care about that. Like, you know, I would think that he wouldn't make a rule like that. And I was like, uh, well, maybe that shows his character. And maybe I'm just still in the mentality of like radical. I have to, I have, I have to do it now. I have to do it now. It's, or I'll never, I'll never be, you know, whatever. So, mm -hmm. which I've come to, cause in the years, I, the desire to be a monk has always been like a, a source of, of really, yeah, I want to be a monk. But then when I don't get what I want, anger ah you know uh -huh. which so, is quite unmonk like by the way i know which is, uh, <laughs> which is uh, uh, okay I, so I, in, I in that here. in that regard then the fastest way for you to actually be a monk is by practicing being one all the time mm -hmm. yeah which yeah, would be the Buddhist and... method of doing it through Anapanasati is keep remembering you're yeah. a monk. Keep remembering monks don't get freaked out by their mommies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Keep remembering that monks are tigers. Monks are lions. Monks are strong dudes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. Got to develop that, and I kind of. Uh, I can I just, do right. I yeah. can do it. That's what you yeah. need to develop. That's yeah. actually on the Eightfold Noble Path. The point of right attitude. Yeah. The right attitude. Yeah, you can deal with your mom. You can make her into your best friend, without giving her any Christian magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's weird because when I was uh, in that you know, in that uh, type of belief and everything, I uh, had a great relationship. I had a great, it was great. It was perfect, almost. Um, but then, uh, you know, you know how it got after that, which made me see really what it was, what, you know, she really felt, which really confused me a lot. So, you know. Well, now you can understand, though, that she really does care about you just now, like yeah. she did then. But now she sees you as tainted merchandise. Yeah. yeah. And so we've got to reconvince her. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you're something special. You're not ordinary. You're not yeah. your average creature or preacher's kid. Yeah, and, You're uh, something higher quality than that. That was one of the things that, in fact, my mom actually said at one time. Was that she could see that the standards of morality and all kinds of things for the Buddhist monk was much higher than your average um, Christian leader. Yeah. Whether that leader is a preacher or um, uh, president of a Christian university or any of that kind of stuff, that a Buddhist monk has much higher uh, views and uh, ways of dealing things. And my mom could see that. In fact, she was... When she began to see it, she became downright embarrassed at her own preacher. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it would really be now is the time for uh, for you to mention that. But eventually you'll get to the point that you can start asking her to do her own comparison, which do you think is of a higher quality human being 
the way that you live your life or the way her preacher lives his. Yeah, that'll yeah. freak her out. I mean, this is like the last straw. <laughs> so don't do that one right away. <laughs> yeah, that's the one where uh, you kind of get a little bit kicked in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to be ready. You got to be that monk already long enough for her to see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so and, that and she part recognizes of that, is, that. Yeah, part of that is having a relationship, which I tried to avoid for like a long time. Completely. So, yeah. All right. Well, enjoy your um, your your practice because you you've got a task at hand. Yeah, it's definitely a a road, a long, at least maybe the shorter, the happier I am, the shorter it is. So. Exactly. So. All right. Well, we'll see you later. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Okay. Bye bye.